Yeah. Oh! <laughs> That was funny. Somebody's gonna pay for that. No, not the not the very last round. I wanna prepare you for a Friday. I have some special problems that I've written over the years. It's gonna be very easy. You'll find out when you do the practice test. Yeah. Alright, which problems do we need to do? Seven. That's a that's pretty much an insult to my loins. Okay, derivative. Uh, I see a product over here. You need to use the product rule. Derivative of the first leave the second one alone. Be the first one alone. Derivative of the second. Did we get that? Plus, this is like box to the one half. One half. Box to the negative half times the derivative of box. So make sure you get the first step correct because that's the key. Do you get that? Sure. And then all you have to do now is simplify. And we so far, how much do you know to simplify to? Until you can't go anymore. Hello? Bum, bum, bum. So you get minus x over root 1 minus x squared. Hey! These cancel out. <laughs> That's your answer. Oh. But of course, if you don't take the derivative correctly, they're not going to cancel. Anyway, wait till you see the problems I wrote. It's like so. The derivative is just massive, but almost everything cancels out. <laughs> Why would you do that to us? <laughs> no, because see, what? You think you looked at it all positive. Number eight. Now, the most common error would be right here. You forgot to multiply by the derivative of box. Fatal error. Okay, number eight. What? This is another insult to my loins. Isn't this the same thing as sine inverse box to the negative one power? Yeah. So this problem is going to, I can tell it's going to be ugly, but you have box within box, right? Derivative. I see box to the negative one. Negative O box to the negative two times the box. derivative of box. Now, what's what's in the box? Sine, sine inverse, inverse box. What's the derivative of sine inverse box? One over the square root of one minus box squared times the derivative of that box, Ooh. which is two. And you really can't do much with that. There's no way that's on the test. That's too ugly. Okay, so 25. Oh, so you guys never had any trouble with 13 to 21? Because those are the ones where students usually have problems. Okay, and then 25. Are you serious? 25. Write the equation of the tangent line. Solve, where did you go? When x equals 3. Okay, what do you need to write the equation of the tangent line? You need a point and a slope. Well, what's the point? 3 comma, what is sine inverse 3 fourths? Give me an approximation. Who's taking physics here? Physics C. 32 degrees. Who's taking physics C? Michael. Yoshida? 0.8. Sine inverse 3 fourths. Ah, uh, never mind. Just put sine inverse 3 fourths. What was your approximation, Yoshida? Sine inverse three, sine inverse point seven five. Well, don't. Shh, I'm trying to think. Sine inverse point seven five. Point seven five. Fifty degrees. I'm thinking. What? I'm thinking fifty degrees. Calculator. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, now, how do you compute the slope of the tangent line? You need the derivative. What's the derivative oh, yeah. of sine inverse box? We just did it right there. The one over the square root yeah. of one minus box squared, which is x squared over 16, times the derivative of box, which is 1 fourth. It's 48 degrees? 48 degrees. Yeah, how, how did you? I just imagined it. No, how did you even hear him, though? That's like so I think crazy. teachers are stupid. <laughs> you guys think, hey, you whisper things and we don't hear it. We hear everything. He's so 2020 hearing? 
No, no, no. So, okay, I'm trying to compute this. So what happens when you plug in 3 into this? You get 1 minus 9 sixteenths times 1 4. What is 1 minus 9 sixteenths? 7 16, so isn't that the square root of 7 over 4 times 1 4? But the 4s cancel out, so you just get 1 over root 7. No, you got to write the equation of the tangent line. y minus sine inverse 3 fourths is equal to 1 over root 7 x minus 3. I don't like the sine inverse 3 fourths. Don't worry, I have problems up my sleeve. Don't worry. Just don't worry. You don't have three. 29. Whoa. Okay, how many people got 29? One percent. Okay, no. this, I'll tell you right now, this problem is on test. Learn, I'm going to teach you how to do it now. There's one on the practice test, and hopefully by the time you get to the test, you know how to do it. Not going to have any time to finish now, in AB, it takes about four or five times before they get it, but you guys are BC, so if I show you once, you got it already. Yeah. Okay, 29, we got f of x is equal to cosine x plus 3x. Okay, I'm just, I'm going to skip all the nonsense. This is what I'm going to ask you to find. What is f inverse prime of 1? I'm just going to skip one. Basically, all the other parts are just setting you up to find this. So this is what the test question is going to be. Just put this book up. Will you help with A? No! <coughs> Wait, what? Show that it has a differentiable in... Okay, so don't even, don't even worry just about that. Me. Just do what I'm showing you now, okay? This is what I'm going to ask you to find on the test. What is the inverse? You take the derivative of the inverse, and then you plug in one. What do you get? Now, I'll, let me show you something to set this problem up. If you have a function and it's inverse, what do you know? They're always symmetric about the line y equals x. So, if you have a point on the graph, what do you want to, what do you want to call this point? A, B. Hey, you read my mind. Therefore, on the inverse, isn't it B, A? Because on the inverse, don't you switch the x's and y's? Now, is there a relationship between the slope of the tangent line on the original graph and the slope of the tangent line on the inverse graph? Yes, yes just look at the picture. What's the, what's the relationship between them? This is what AB always says. Negative reciprocal. No, they're not perpendicular. They could be perpendicular, but they're not all the time. So when somebody said it, I heard it. They're reciprocals of each other. For example, if the slope is 3 halves here, then wouldn't this one be 2 thirds? <laughs> so that's the relationship between the derivative of an inverse and the derivative of the function. This is central to the whole, does everybody understand this? Draw this picture if you need to. Okay, so here, this is what I always do. So you got the function and its inverse. We are trying, to, at a particular point, we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line because this is prime, right? When x is 1. So when the x coordinate is 1 on the inverse, I need to know the slope because that's what the derivative tells you, right? So this is what we're trying to find. But that's too difficult to figure out, so we figure it out on the original function because of this relationship. So if I can find the slope on the original function, then on the inverse, it's just going to be the reciprocal. That's the strategy here. Are you guys ready? No. Okay, here we go. If the x coordinate is 1 on the inverse, then on the original function, doesn't that mean the y coordinate is 1? Because you've got to switch the x's and y's. Now look at this function. Here's the original one. If the y coordinate is 1, what is the x coordinate? 0. Very good. 0. Ooh. How did you get that? Well, if you plug in 0, you get 1 plus 0. So you just guess and check? Yes, you guess and check. Hey. And it's going to be something nice, because if it's not something nice, it's too hard to figure out. What are you guys looking at? So how do you compute the slope? of the original function when the x coordinate is 0? You take the derivative and you plug in 0. So let's do it. Take the derivative. What's the derivative of this? Negative, Negative sine x plus 3. 
What happens when I plug in 0 for x into the derivative? You get 3. You get three. Therefore, the slope on the inverse graph is 1 third. Boom! Yeah! Wait, that's high. Thank you. <laughs> can you go higher? No, you can do better. So, can you guys repeat this problem on Friday? You're going to have another shot at it on the practice test. But if I were you, I would wait a little while, let it percolate, like tonight, maybe about 9 o'clock, do this problem again. You know what I mean? Seeing it for the first time. Swirl dream around. about it. I don't sleep. Grant seeing it for the first time. Olga. Okay. What would be a problem like that, but that could be like two multiple solutions. No more multiple yeah. solutions. Expound, Olga. Expound. 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 Okay, this is what I think Olga is saying. He, he said, he, oh, he's saying when the y coordinate is 1, when the y coordinate is 1, can't you have more than one x coordinate? No, but you can't. You know why? Because this is the inverse. In order for a function to have an inverse, it has to be one to one. Remember that? Yeah, one to one. That means for every x, there can only be one y. For every y, there's only one x. So that's why you cannot have more than one solution. There is only one. See, all this thing that we learned about one to one, remember that last year? You guys just let it go over your head. Ah, we don't need to know that. But it's important in mathematics. And I know what you're thinking now. That's why I'm not going to major in mathematics. Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I didn't major. Well, I only majored in music. I only majored in music for one semester. Wait, really? Yeah. My first seven semesters Wait, of one semester. when I went to UH, I had no major. So every time the report cut comes, you know what it says for major? General curriculum. <laughs> That's what it said. But then finally, I had I had to get serious. I had to get a degree because I'm going to my eighth semester, so I majored in music. But then they made me take <laughs> tuba lessons. Because tuba was my instrument, I had to take tuba lessons, and that was terrible. I just like playing tuba for fun. I don't want to take lessons. <laughs> so I said, no way, I'm not going to be a band teacher. And I, I had math credit, so I decided to become a math teacher. And then did I tell oh, some of you were in my class last year? So my finals, my ninth semester, I changed my major to math. Okay, wait, this is music. I just crossed out. And I needed three more courses to get the Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics. So here, one, two, three. So these two courses, I guarantee the D already. No need more. No. I think I got C minus, C minus. Oh, that's what I think I got. Wait, what? You guys don't, you guys don't understand. No. In college, D is passing. You get credit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the only problem is if you apply to grad school, you probably not going to get it. Right. That's, that's the thing. Okay, so here's the third course. This is called Advanced Calculus. This is all we did the whole A year was prove 120 something theorems that I didn't even understand. <laughs> so I actually stopped going to class. So I, I kind of knew I, I kind of knew I failed it already. But then the teacher said, the professor said, oh, the, the final exam is going to be, out of the 120-something theorems we proved, it's going to be 10 of them on the final. Yeah, that's so nice. the night before, I just memorized, I found the 10 shortest theorems. <laughs> <laughs> I just purely memorized it. And you know what? Two of them were on the test. Hey. <laughs> I got 20%. Pretty good. <laughs> that means I failed! <laughs> so I knew I failed. I called up the professor the next day. Said, oh, professor Sordis. Um, that's his name. Can, can you please just give me a D minus? And I was giving him the whole soft story. I'm the first of my family to graduate from college. Well, if I graduate. <laughs> and, uh, my mom's Wait, already I throwing a party. Can you, can you just please give me a D minus? I know it was terrible. Just, can you just please give me a D minus? And there was this long silence. You got your D minus, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I graduated. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, for real. That's how I. This yeah. is a true story. You want it? No, but after I finished college, then I got turned on to mathematics. Turned. After I finished college. Yeah, so I did all kinds of problems. I, I tried to become a, an expert in mathematics. That was after college. So you went to grad school, crying. 
<laughs> no, I got my <laughs> teaching <laughs> credential. Out. Just give oh. me a so I got to teach <laughs> secondary. <laughs> and, oh, you guys can't be asking these questions. We've got to learn. <laughs> what do we need to learn? This is the last <laughs> section. Last section. Last section. <laughs> so the only derivatives <laughs> that we need <laughs> to compute <laughs> now. <laughs> if, shh, look, look at the last three down here. So look. What we did the like? trig functions, the inverse trig functions, and now we got exponential and logarithmic functions. Oh no. Look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm going to have to resort to A-B techniques. I might have to just tell you, tell you what they are. Yes. But we, can do it. <laughs> we don't have time to derive. Okay, anyway, if you, want, if you want to derive that, here, how about read the book? Okay. No, the book is bad, remember? Yeah, yeah, you guys, someone don't even have a book. Like that. No. <laughs> I don't even have a book. No. <laughs> anyway, we did this one last year, people. This is why e to the x is such a special number. It's just because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Remember, when we did the power series a couple times. No, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But now. What if you have e to the box? Is the derivative just e to the box? No, no because of the chain rule, you got to multiply by the derivative of the box. Who proved the chain rule? It's the chain chain. Chain. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were just chain. Not in, I'm assuming, or not pre no, no, I like name was actually <laughs> not wrong. Okay, but Mr. Park, what would happen? You know, the, I'm looking at. Oh gosh, oh, I want to derive it for you, but you just can't. What if you have a to the box, though, where a is a number that's not e? Is the derivative like instead of two, e, like e to the x? What if you get two to the x, or three <coughs> to the x, or five to the x? These are exponential functions. I'll just tell you, it's a to the u times natural log a times the derivative of box. Oh, oh my god! You, know uh, you can actually prove this quite easily using no, that's implicit not. differentiation. But oh wait, that is. That's I want to go to lunch, people. I'm hungry. <laughs> Listen, this is what you got to know the difference between on tonight's homework. You got to know the difference between like x squared, 2 to the x, and x to the x. Okay, now, which one of these, which one of these, when I take the derivative, can I just put the power in the front and reduce it by 1? First that one, one, when you have x to a number power, 2 to the x, to, I mean 2x to the first. Can I do that with this? Can I go no. x2 to the x minus 1? No. no, that would be a fatal error. <laughs> you yeah. only can use this rule, x to the n, we call that the power rule, when it's x to a number power. So like for example, if you had x to the square root of 3, can I go root 3 x to the root 3 minus 1? <coughs> yeah. Yes, because root 3 is a number. Okay, now, what about in this situation when you have 2 to the something right there? Then you use this rule right here. So, uh, fo following this rule, 2 to the x times, times the natural log 2 times the derivative of x, 1. one. Oh, box up. That's easy. Let's do another one. What about, and some of you are thinking, well, what if you had e to the x? Can I just use that rule? Yeah. yeah. e to the x times natural log e times the derivative of x, which is 1. <laughs> but what is natural log e? 1. 1. That's oh. why you get e to the x. Oh, boy. Oh, that rule works for, uh, it should work, right? It's a rule. OK, let's do this. What about 3 to the tan inverse x power? Oh, no. Why do you got to do that? <laughs> because that's <laughs> how you're going to get in your homework tonight. So is this, a num is this an exponential function, a number to a power? Yeah, so I'm going to use this rule, the a to the u rule. So follow the rule, 3 to the 10 inverse x, are you guys looking at that? Times natural log 3 times the derivative of u. Uh, secant squared. No. This is 10 inverse, not 10. There's a big difference between oh 10 goodness. and 10 inverse, Trent. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> Don't go near the camera. <laughs> microwave. Microwave seed uh, crown. No okay, there. this is what we need to time for. Sure. This is what we need to time for. But what about when you have, see how, yeah. in this one, the power is a number. The exponent is a number. And when you have an exponential function, the base is a number. What happens when neither is a number, though? X element. Can I use any of these rules? No. The answer is no. 
So we have to use a technique called logarithmic differentiation. Oh, you can log you guys understand? Okay, so what, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to log both sides. Natural log y is equal to natural log of x to the x. Now, but the power. Why do you think we took the natural log of both sides? Because you can put the power in the front <coughs> using your properties of logarithms. And then now, you can simply do implicit differentiation, which we are experts at, right? So what do I have here? Natural log box. What's the derivative of natural log box? Oh, one over box. I can't do that because I didn't <laughs> teach it to you. Let's put that on the list. What's the derivative of natural log box? One over one box, box, one box, box, box times, times the derivative of box. Genius. Okay, we've got three minutes left. We're in trouble. The derivative of natural log box is one over box times the derivative of box. Just follow the rule. And then over here, I see a product. So what should I do? Product, product rule. Derivative oh of the first, leave the second one alone. Leave the first one alone. And what's the derivative of natural log x? One over, one over x times the derivative of x, one. which is one. Okay. So how do I solve for dy dx? Multiply both sides by y to get rid of that. So y times natural log x plus one. Now that is the correct answer. However, on the AP exam, this is probably going to be a multiple choice question, and it's going to be written like this. How come that's the same thing as that? Because why? Let's look at the original equation. They substituted it for y. Uh, so, do you guys understand when to use each one? Yeah. Okay. And then, last thing before you leave, I took it off the list because we're BC. What happens when you have any other log that's not base E? Like, what if you had this natural log of base B? of box. Here, let me give you an example. Y equals log base, give me a number. No, no, three. Okay, base three of X. But Mr. Park, it's not on the list. What am I going to do? Use the change of base formula. Oh. So oh remembering God. our algebra two and pre-calculus, what's the change of base formula for this? Log natural log X over natural log three. Remember the top <coughs> goes on the top and the bottom goes on the bottom. One minute remaining. Hey, this is a constant. Throw it on the side like an unwanted pet. <laughs> and then what's the derivative of natural log x? 1 over x. 1 over x. So your final answer is 1 over x ln 3. So whenever you have a log whose base is different from me, just use the change of base formula. And no need to worry. So we don't, that's why we really don't need that. Okay, let's go to lunch. So try your best on the homework and fail. Yeah, that quiz just took way longer than expected. Would you give this to us? Yeah, but they never took this long. Thank you. Probably, I don't think so. What? Maybe.